program coordinator of msc dfsm and dnhe program madam i extend my heartfelt thanks to you for accepting our invitation and uh, delivering this induction meeting uh, lecture uh, before i invite dr diksha kapoor and let me inform you all two three uh, important issues where first of all at outset i congratulate you all for registering with indira gandhi national open university regional center mumbai for this msc dfsm and dnhe programs of july 2022 academic cycle indira gandhi national open university was established by act of parliament in 1985 and 1987 onwards we are offering the programs presently we are offering more than 250 programs the certificates diplomas degrees issued by the igno is recognized across the globe and the regional the igno has recently got nac a plus plus grade which shows is quality it recognition in the open and distance learning education particularly this open and distance learning is having three important components that is a multimedia approach we have adopted study material digital study material online academic counseling sessions providing you the recorded videos like through our tv through our online other platforms like youtube facebook and through the gyan darshan gyan vani and gyan dara these are the digital support we are providing to the uh, learners for uh, learning process ke liye and successfully submission of the assignments and writing of their examinations we are providing support services at city center level which is your first contact point and the regional center level which is coordinating between the study center and igno headquarters and moderately all the uh, student queries are uh, resolved at the regional center level and for the benefit of the students uh during this covid 19 pandemic time we have started online uh, student grievance redressal drives at the study center level as well as regional center level and through the social media also we are providing support services these are all the information you you are going to uh, see in detail before we give that uh, information and i request uh, dr disha kapoor ji uh to uh present uh, uh details about the programs and other activities academic activities of uh, msc dfsm as well as uh dnhe program and oriented the students madam at present there are 73 students uh we are having uh, anyhow we are having 100 dnhe students 
and some 85 uh, MSc DFSM students. But anyhow, this video we are going to record, we are recording. The same will be uploaded in our YouTube channel and the Facebook page also and the Twitter also we are going to post. The students, those who have missed this induction meeting, they can use this opportunity. Let we all listen first, Dr. Deeksha Kapoor presentation. Later on, any individual queries uh, we, you are having, it all will be uh, answered and there is no need to worry. Please don't interfere uh, in the middle of the presentation. Madam, ko aapko time dena hai. Uh, this is a very good opportunity for all the learners where you are directly interacting with the program coordinator, who is the key person of designing this program and developing of the study material and even all the activities related to your program. This is the good opportunity for the learners to interact directly with the program coordinator. I hope you are all going to uh, enjoy this uh, session and gain the uh, knowledge and your uh, journey in the IGNO will be uh, fruitful and comfortable. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. I invite Dr. Diksha Kapoorji uh, to present. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rao. Uh, it's indeed, uh, first of all, a very warm good evening to all our learners of MSc DFSM program and the DNHE program. Well, uh, uh, it is, uh, I mean, since both the program students are together, they will have to bear with us. Uh, I will start by first uh, giving the background and the details of the MSc DFSM program. Okay, so um, uh, just give me a minute. Let me share my screen with all of you so that you people can uh, watch this program. Okay. Can uh, you see the slides? Can you see the slides? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes. Okay. All right. So. Um, no, ma'am. No, 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 it is not. Uh, oh. yeah. uh, can you now see? No, uh, ma'am. Now it is okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Uh, no, yes, no, 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 no. Can you see the slide now? No. Yes, ma'am. No. All right. Yes, yes, so, yes. Fine, fine. So uh, the program is called the Master of Science uh, uh, Food Nutrition uh, with Specialization in Dietetics and Food Service Management. This program is a 72 credit program. And uh, uh, this program has been developed with a view to train manpower workforce, such as dietitians, nutrition sorry. counselors. That uh, yes. slide is not scrolling down. Uh, it is not scrolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. only. Can you? Is it scrolling? Can you see the second slide? No, no, only first. No, no, no. no. Okay, give me a minute then. Just a minute. Okay, now can you? Just a minute. Uh, let the second. Yeah. Now, can you see the second slide? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. You can see the second slide. Yes, can you see the third slide? You can now. Yes. Okay. yes. Fine. Yes. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. So this program uh, has been developed with a view. Uh, to train learners, okay, uh, uh, as dietitians, nutrition counselors, food service managers, uh, uh, it will provide you an opportunity of higher education so that you can enrich your lives by entering the labor market. You can start your own food service unit. It, this program can lead to entrepreneurship, basically you will get the 
knowledge and skills to function as dietitians, nutrition counselors. Okay. The another uh, advantage is that uh, there are many uh, professional uh, already working in this area. They may have a PG diploma in this area and they may require to upgrade their knowledge and skills. So it will upgrade their competencies to function as dietitians, technicians and upgrade your knowledge and develop productive skills and enhance your career uh, progression and employability. OK, so this program as I've said, it's a 72 credit program. It's a professional program. So it will require a whole lot of commitment, a whole lot of your time to be able to do it. I'm uh, informing you right at the outset that if you have taken this program casually, that okay, you will enter and you will get out of this program. No, you will not be able to complete this program if you do not have the kind of commitment if you do not take out time and follow the program as it is being planned and delivered to you okay so uh, the program duration this program is primarily two years uh, it has a two-year duration but since we are an open distance learning institution we understand the needs of the students, we understand that you may need some flexibility. So the maximum duration is four years, which means that once you have enrolled for this program, you can take minimum two years and maximum four years to complete the program. The validity of the program is for four years. If you do not complete it within this period, then your registration is over. Okay, moving further uh, to this program, uh, what you have is uh, the program has a theory component, a practical component, as well as the project work component. Uh, 72 credits, how are they distributed through this slide? I'm afraid uh, it's written very small, but just to make you understand that uh, the program is MSc DFSM. That is the program code. There are total 19 courses which you need to complete in two years. Uh, students, you can make note of all these things so that when you get your study material, you can check that have you received the theory course material? Have you received the practical course material? Have you received the project work material? Each uh, of these courses have a code and the code starts with MFN, okay? So the theory courses are from MFN 1, 2, 3, 4 till 10. So there are 10 theory courses there are seven practical courses. The practical courses have a code, which is MFNL. L is for lab, lab courses. MFNL, two, three, four till eight. You have your lab courses. And then you have two courses, which are projects, which is MFNP the, for project the code becomes MFNP11 and MFNP12. Each of these courses have a credit. Uh, all theory courses can be of two credit or four credit or six credit. And all practical courses are only of two credit. So the seven practical courses, each of them of two credit and the project work, one project work is internship, which is of 16 credit and one is dissertation, which is of eight credit. So to, um, together, this constitutes, uh, let me take you through each one of these courses. 
okay now courses and credit as i've already informed you the first course is applied physiology which has only a theory component so all co um, courses uh, it is not necessary that they will have a practical component but whichever course has a theory the code will be for example look at the second course nutritional biochemistry it has both a theory course as well as a practical course both of these courses are independent though they are linked together but you have to clear the theory separately and the practical separately the third course food microbiology and safety is mfn3 it has a two credit theory and an mfn l03 which is the practical course like this you have total seven theory courses which have practicals and you have three other theory courses which do not have the practicals for example uh, all nutrition courses uh, like advanced nutrition public nutrition clinical nutrition uh, uh, clinical and therapeutic nutrition entrepreneurship food service management these are hardcore nutrition courses but since dietetics is a interdisciplinary subject we have courses like nutritional biochemistry food microbiology food science and technology and they add on to the value of this program you see the new uh, uh, education policy the national education policy emphasizes on multidisciplinary courses to be included and we already have this inbuilt in our program so all uh, uh, nutrition courses will be of four credit theory to practical and all the those courses which add on um, and have value for example nutritional biochemistry microbiology food science they are two credit courses and we also have a computer application course which is two credit course okay then you also have a research method and biostatistics theory course which is of six credit only theory no practical and the computer understanding computer application which is again two credit theory so the total is 72 credit what uh, is a credit one credit is 30 study hours okay so accordingly you will have to put the time in clearing this course for each course, there is a credit, and each course you have to complete. Now, which are the first year courses and which are the second year courses? I have just put it up on the screen for you to see. The first year course is Applied Physiology, which is a four credit course, Nutritional Biochemistry, both the theory and the practical you must finish in the first year. Food microbiology and safety again has a theory as well as a practical which you must complete. Then you have principles of food science in the first year, which is again a two credit theory and a two credit practical. You then have a main public nutrition paper, which is a four credit theory and a two credit practical and understanding computer applications. Okay, so as you can see, there are six theory papers and four practical courses in the first year, which you must complete. Then when you move on to the second year, you have an ad advanced nutrition theory and practical course. Each of the theory course here is of four credit and two credit practical, clinical and therapeutic nutrition, entrepreneurship, and you have the research methods and biostatistics paper, which does not have a practical, but a six credit theory. And at the end of the second year, you will also be required to do a three month internship in a recognized hospital. And 
you can also start work on your dissertation so that an eight credit research work is completed at the end of the second year all right so this is the nut and shell of your entire course curriculum do not panic all this information which i've just talked about is already available in the program guide which is available online um, if you have not received it as yet you can download it from the ignu website www.ignu.ac.in that is the ignu website which i'm sure all of you know go to the search link uh, once you open the home page on the top right there is a search window if you type msc dfsm program guide there you can download the msc dfsm program guide it gives you the a to z of this program it starts with uh, the curriculum the syllabus what does each course entail all that information is provided in that program guide do download it and put it somewhere very handy on your computer once you are clear about your courses what you have to do in the first year what you have to do in the second year your life will be easier so what you will notice that to assist you in um, um, going through this course material we have arranged counseling sessions rc mumbai and the program study center they will organize these counseling sessions for you usually they are uh, held on the weekend preferably a sunday but you can coordinate with them and they will give you a schedule for every two credit theory course you will get five to six sessions of two and a half hours each for every four credit you can have about eight sessions also for a six credit like the research methods you can have eight sessions now uh, you may wonder that uh, how can you complete the entire two credit in six sessions well the point is that we have already given you the study material it is written for you whatever you need to know on that topic is already included so and it is a very extensive deep um, um you know uh, deeply understood and written course material they are thick books so if you do not refer to any other material also and sincerely go through this course material you will learn a lot so these sessions are not meant to be like the classroom sessions you all may be used to that you go to the class and the teacher comes and she starts these sessions on the other hand are meant for you to read the material at home and come and discuss your doubts with teachers with counselors who will help you understand this subject very well okay so if you come prepared to these sessions you will make the most of these sessions so once the induction meeting is over a, a counseling schedule will be given to you and it is in your own interest that you attend these sessions because if you do not attend these sessions then they, they you will at the end of the day will not know what to do how to do where to go uh, theory uh, counseling well it 100% it is not mandatory but like i have said it is in your own interest that you attend the theory counseling sessions so that you know what is happening and what is required for you to do then if you look at this slide this is the practical courses please understand this very very carefully the all practical courses are of two credit as i've already informed you and these courses will be conducted in 14 sessions 
and each session will be of four hours. Okay, so in these 14 sessions, you would be required to complete the various practicals and the activities included in these practicals. We have developed very fine state-of-the-art practical manuals for you. These practical manuals are actually workbooks where each practical, the concept, the theory is explained to you, followed by activities linked to that practical. Three activities, two activities, as many. It may vary from practical to practical. And this booklet will come to you as part of the course material. You are required to go to the program study center. And the attendance is 100% compulsory. I am informing everybody here, including the program study center staff. Please see that the students attend each and every session, 14 session of four hours each, and the 15th session will be the exam, the practical exam. All those students who have attended all the 14 sessions can sit for the exam. If you do not come for the practicals, you will not be allowed to sit for the exam and you will not be able to clear this exam. Attendance, 100% required. See, this is a skill development program. It's a professional program. If you do not attend the practicals, you will not be able to learn the practical aspects of this program. How to plan diets, microbiology practicals, biochemistry practicals, they are all hands-on. You are required to be in the center and you are required to do each and every practical. You will record the practicals in the manual. And I will explain to you how you will be evaluated. So don't take it lightly. If you are working somewhere, you do not have the time, then I'm sorry, you will not be able to clear this program. OK, am I clear? The practicals, 14 sessions of four hours each, the uh, program study center can do it um, in eight days, morning, evening, four hours, like that. For each course, they need to have seven days for practicals, and the eighth day will be the practical exam. Or you can do it uh, on 15 days, say four hours each day. We will leave it to you. But this is the compulsory mandatory attendance courses, which each and every student must complete. And the program study center must ensure that the students are attending these courses. Only then they can learn, they can develop the skills. Moving further, how will you be evaluated? Well, there is what we call as continuous evaluation or assessment and there will be a term and examination. For all theory courses, you are required to do one assignment. So there are 10 theory courses in two years, which you have to complete. So for each course, one assignment. First year, as I told you, there are total six theory courses which you have to do. So you will have to complete six assignments in the first year. These assignments, are uh, each of them will be of 100 marks and you are required uh, to get at least 40% uh, marks to clear them, all right? Only if you complete and clear the assignments, you will be allowed to sit for the term and exam at the end of the year. These assignments carry 30% weightage to the overall marks in your grade card. The term and exam, as I've told you, will be held at the end of the year. Again, 100 marks paper, but it carries 70% weightage. OK, this is about the theory courses. Coming to the practical courses, I have already told you that you are required 
to uh, do 14 sessions of four hours each. Now, during these sessions, whatever is your performance, your uh, attendance, your discipline, your involvement in the practicals, and doing your practicals and reporting in the practical manual, which is also your practical file. All these things you are recording and submitting for evaluation with your counselor. And this is 100 marks. And at the end, in the 15th session, there will be a four to six hour exam, which will be conducted with an external evaluator as well. Your counselor will call an external evaluator. And whatever you have uh, done in the 14, any activity can be picked up by the external evaluator. There will be a viva. There will be two to three activities you will be required to do. Again, a 100 mark paper will be given and your performance will be assessed. So what you do in the 14 sessions are the internal component. Out of 100, 40% of that will be included in your final marks. And the final exam, 100, 60% weightage is given to that. Okay. I hope you have understood this. So attending each and every practical is important because it carries 40% weightage to your overall marks. All right. And then you have a dissertation and internship, which is 100%. I'll just explain to you subsequently. Now, to be able to clear each and every assignment, theory, practical, you must get at least 40% marks individually in each component, which means for a theory course, you have to complete the assignment first. You must get minimum 40 marks in that assignment to clear it. Then you can sit for the termed exam. In the termed exam, minimum 40% marks you must get to clear it. Likewise, for practicals, you must get a minimum 40% marks in the internal assessment and a 40% marks in the external term and exam to clear individually. So together, internal and external, uh, 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 you know, you may do the internal very well and get, say, 80 out of 100. But your performance in the final term and practical exam is poor and you get only 10. But 40% is you are getting 40%. That will not do. So individually in each component, you must get a 40% mark. Assignment, I've already told you that each assign, uh, theory uh, course has one assignment. Practical courses do not have assignments, but the theory courses for each there is one. So you will get an assignment booklet. In fact, these booklets are already uploaded on IGNU website. If on the IGNU website, which I've already told you, www.ignu.ac.in, on the home page, you will find a student zone link. These are, you know, some things which all students must make note of. Under the student zone, there is a download link. Once you click there, the assignments icon comes. Click on the assignment and go to the MSc DFSM assignments. For the year July 2022, the MSc first year assignments are uploaded. Okay? Download these assignments. You should get a hard copy also, but if you have not got it, don't panic. They are already available. You are required to complete these assignments, as I've told you. A very important aspect of these assignments is that these assignments will also help you study the course material. You know, it's a big booklet, thick booklet, which comes to you for each course. 
where do you start? You can get a little intimidated, but do not panic. Each assignment has a theory, uh, part A, which is uh, which are the theory questions, part B, which may have practical uh, questions, but otherwise they are basically linked to your theory courses. So you can use the assignment questions to study the material, the course material. So these assignments have a pedagogical value too. That is why I'm telling you, when you go for your theory counseling, go prepared. Try to work out the questions given in the assignment. And if you are not able to understand, discuss them with the counselor. The counselor will help you understand the concepts, how to write the assignment, the assignment booklets on the first and the second page, all instructions, guidelines have been given how what kind of uh, um, uh, sheets you need to a4 size sheets you need uh, how do you write your assignment where do you give your enrollment number all these kind of issues are mentioned there in those assignment booklets and where you are required to submit how you are required to submit all these concepts are explained in the assignment booklet read it carefully so that you know what you are required to do okay so the assignments you can download and you will be able to do uh, another aspect about assignments each assignment has a deadline a date of submission but this year since we are already delayed and for some assignments, the deadline may have crossed. So do not panic. We will request your program study center to give you one month from now to be able to submit your assignments. That will be a good time. You can attend the theory classes. And one month from now, you can submit all those assignments for which the deadline has crossed. I think it would be for the first course only, but do check and uh, submit your assignments at the Program Study Center. Uh, RC Mumbai, uh, our regional director and the staff will guide you further after I complete my presentation on this. Moving to the internship, the, these are the project courses. I've talked about theory, I've talked about practical courses. Coming to the project courses, one is the internship program. Let me make it very clear that these courses are the second year courses, which means after, at the end of the first year, you have to complete your admission formalities because at the moment you have got admission in the first year. So in March, you will be required to complete the second year admission formalities. You have to pay the fees and complete your admission. Then you will be sent your course material and other things for the second year. You cannot go for the internship if you do not complete all your practical courses. Because in these practical courses, we teach you the practicals, the skills required to be able to function as a dietitian. You cannot go to a hospital without knowing what to do, how to plan a diet, not knowing what the subject is. Therefore, again, the program study center in charge and the regional centers, please do not give any reference letter to students if they have not completed their practical courses, because then the hospitals tell us that the students don't know anything. Therefore, students, please complete all your practical courses before you can go for internship. Well, the first year theory courses you would have completed. The second year theory courses, maybe you may be giving in June, but if you want and you have completed all your practical courses, you can start going for internship three months before the program completes. 
So a three-month internship in the dietetic department. Please note, it has to be a recognized hospital with a dietetic department, which is run by a trained dietitian, a senior dietitian who has five years minimum work experience. Or if she is a registered dietitian, well and good, you have to train under her. Okay? And they will work out a schedule for you for these three months. And you have to complete a three-month internship for which an internship manual has been developed, a very state-of-the-art manual, which uh, you must read the first few pages, which give instructions as to where, what you are required to do. And then it is also like a workbook or an internship file. Whatever you will do in each department, you have to record in that internship manual itself. And at the end, get it signed by the dietitian in charge under whose guidance you are doing the internship. All that is included in the internship manual. And then you have to submit it for evaluation. How will you be evaluated for internship? The dietitian under whom you are doing the internship, she will look at your work your internship manual, the activities which you are required to do mentioned in the manual. There are case studies you are required to do. There is administrative, there is nutrition, uh, um, education, counseling activities given. Each and every activity, your dietitian will mark you. And at the end of it, out of 100 or sorry, out of 60, she will give you a mark. And on that certificate, she will sign that, yes, you have completed the internship. Once this is complete, you are required to submit this internship report at IGNU headquarters. The address is already given in the internship manual. That is why I'm asking you to read the instructions very carefully before you go for internship and before you submit the report. Otherwise, you will be at a loss, OK? And this report, final report, is then evaluated by the faculty or by another dietitian, which is 40 marks. So 60 given by your dietitian in charge under whom you have done, and 40 by the external. So out of 100, you will be given a mark, all right? and then. Uh, one important thing about internship is that you can, there are many students who have already done an internship. Please listen very carefully. Only as part of PG Diploma in Dietetics, if you have done a three month internship, that also in the last five years, you can write to us uh, um, all the details, where to write, which form to fill, is already given in the uh, MSc DFSM program guide. Please go to the section on credit transfer in the program guide and look up the form, look up the address, where and what all you have to attach. You have to attach your mark sheet of the PG diploma. You have to attach the three-month internship certificate, and you have to give a credit fee uh, for this. All this will go to an address which has been mentioned. And then when you send it to us, we will look at the details and give you a credit transfer, which means you do not have to do the internship again. Let me. Um, inform once again, only internship undertaken under PG Diploma in Dietetics is recognized for credit transfer. There are students who may have done as part of their BSc program. We do not recognize it. There are students who may have done some other internship. We don't recognize that. 
only as part of PG diploma in dietetics. If you have a PG diploma, you have done a three month internship and a degree is being awarded with a mark sheet, you can avail credit transfer. All right. And finally, the research work, the dissertation course, you will be allotted a guide from the program study center. You will have to work on any one topic. It can be linked to nutrition, dietetics, whatever you have studied during the two years. Prepare a small study. To help you in this, we have already prepared a dissertation guideline booklet. Read it carefully. Discuss it with the counselor, your guide, and undertake a small study. And at the end, you are required to submit that report with the regional center. The evaluation of dissertation is decentralized. You are required to complete it, submit it uh, either at the program study center or at the regional center where they will get it evaluated and you will be required to appear for a viva voce. So the dissertation evaluation will be at three levels. First, the guide or the counselor who is guiding you will evaluate your work, your capabilities, your dedication, your uh, skills, which you are you know, bringing to this course. Out of 40 marks, she will mark you. Then the report which you submit is sent to an external evaluator. She will evaluate it or he will evaluate it. 40 marks for that and the same evaluator then will conduct a viva voce you have to defend your thesis and that carries 20 marks so 40 40 20 this is how your dissertation will be evaluated okay i have given you an overall uh, overview uh, the term and exam schedules well uh, for the theory courses I, uh, practicals, I have made it clear. Internship, dissertation has no term and exam. Only the theory courses have a term and exam. And the university conducts these term and exams every June and every December. So the first time you can appear for these exams will be at the end of the first year, which means in June 2023, you can sit for the exam, but you need to inform IGNU that you want to sit for the exam, which means there is an examination form which you would be required to submit by March, April. The regional center will give you more details. These forms are submitted online, so everything is available on IGNU website. You don't have to go anywhere, fill the form, pay the examination fee, inform the university that you are ready to sit for the exam. For those courses which you do not want to sit, does not matter. You will get another opportunity after six months in December 2023 to sit for the exam again. OK, so like this, you will get every six months an opportunity to sit for the exam. For the second year courses, you can give the exam at the end of the second year, which will be in June 2024. And then every six months you can sit for the exam. OK, so once you read all this in the program guide, it will become more easy. Um, examination schedules, you can, um, I think, the regional center will give you more information on this. As I've told you, by March end, you must fill up this form if you want to sit for the June exam. And by October end, you must fill the form if you want to sit for the December. This December, you cannot sit uh, uh, since you have to complete one year. All right. Uh, I've already told you that you have to re-register in the second year. 
even if you haven't completed your first year courses, does not matter. Register for the second year, complete, pay the fees, complete. Then you get maximum four years to complete the program. All right. And those students who do not want to complete the entire two year program and get an MSc degree, they can avail a facility of exit by taking a PG diploma. There are many students now also who do not want to go through the entire dissertation course and everything. So these are the courses. If you, of course, you can get, you can exit the program only at the end of the second year, where these are the courses which are mandatory for a PG diploma. The first MFN 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 theory courses and uh, the practical courses MFN L 6, 7, okay, and MFN 0, 1, 1. So all these courses you can complete and once you have completed along with the three month internship, you can write to us saying that you do not want to complete the MSc and you want to exit with a PG diploma. And if you have completed all these mandatory courses, we will grant you the PG diploma. All this information, what I'm speaking, is available in the program guide. Please read it and it will become clear. I think I will stop here. And if you have any queries, you can always email your query to me at deekshakapoor at ignu.ac.in. I repeat my email deekshakapoor at ignu.ac.in. So I think I will end um, my session here. And if there are any queries or, um, you know, then uh, we can. Um, take up those queries, those questions, and then move on to DNAG. Okay. Thank you, madam. Uh, any students having any queries, please raise your hand. Or otherwise, you can on your mic and the video. You can now uh, ask the questions. I think uh, we are having uh, someone raise the yeah and okay Ikta. one by one yeah yeah one by one you can uh uh come Ikta. yes ma'am uh it is regarding the uh another course which i have been told to uh study mm -hmm. it's uh, cncc2 yeah yeah thank you for raising this Heta. Mm -hmm. there are many of you who uh, have been given admission in msc but uh, you need to complete the CFN or the CNCC program. Uh, these programs are the basic because you do not have a nutrition background completely. So you need to, this is a master level program and you must understand the concepts before you go on here. So we request you, uh, if you have CFN or CNCC, complete the course in the first six months or one year math, so that your basics are clear, so that when you go for your theory or your practicals, there you are not lost. So this, these are simple courses. You can study on your own, but the regional center and the program study center will arrange counseling for these courses as well. So do attend these. For you people, it is extra work, more effort. And you must complete this. Without completing this, you may not get a degree, MSc degree at the end of four years. So please make sure you complete these courses in the first one year itself before jumping for the MSc degree. So work hard, complete these courses, get the background. You will find the other courses for the MSc easy there. All right. Uh, similarly, uh, there will be assignments you have to do for these courses as well. Uh, you have, if you have a CFN course, uh, sorry, program, there are three courses in the CFN program. 
for each course there will be one assignment and you have to sit for the terminal exam so complete the assignments right away take another month complete the assignments and then fill up the examination form since we are already delayed 6 months now you can sit for the exam in june 2023 so by march you can submit all the three assignments and sit for the terminal exam and side by side continue with your msc those students who have taken cncc there are two courses you are required to complete both those courses do the assignment one assignment and the terminal exam complete it and side by side continue okay, okay. any any other question so this uh, exam uh, exam is going to be in june uh, june 2020 form in march in march similarly okay. like you do for your msc Just like msc okay. yes uh, all examinations yes, one subject more than the other people that is it uh, no uh, which course do you have cncc CNCC. you have to do two courses more two subjects Ah, so uh, there is a program guide of CNCC mm -hmm. also available online. Okay. Go to the search link on mm -hmm. the IGNU website mm -hmm. and type CNCC program guide. Okay. And download it on your computer. Read mm -hmm. it carefully. It gives mm -hmm. you the course, the curriculum, the course structure, mm -hmm. everything. And and yes, also. you've already got it. Very good. So go through the material. You have an assignment. Have you got the assignment? No. Okay. Then, then, then go to the student zone on the IGNU website. Mm. Go to download. Mm. There, in the assignment link, if you click, mm. go to CNCC under the certificate program. Okay. Today itself, download the assignment. Okay. And start doing those questions. so you know we prepared the questions in such a way that the entire course gets covered okay. so it will also help you in reading the course material mm -hmm. okay okay so Any one more question yeah since we are not uh, we have not got the other study materials how hmm. do you prepare for uh, okay so uh, so what you do is uh, on the ignu website there is an e gyan kosh link in the e gyan kosh we have uploaded all the course material so the soft copy of the course material is available on e gyan kosh download it keep it handy for you till you do not receive the hard copy you can read in the soft copy and complete it okay so that you can start doing your assignments and as soon as the material comes then you have the hard copy as well okay Thank yes you, yeah anybody else uh yes ma'am can i ask yes. my question yes yes uh, uh, kaushalya yes mm -hmm. hi ma'am um so hi. on the e gyan kosh um, there are two uh, masters of science for this thing there's one msc in dietetics and food service management um uh, and then another one is the revised one so i think i emailed you about it revised and, uh, yeah so revised uh, but then in revised in the first year or the second year there's no mfn 001 there's no applied physiology so okay just see good. see uh, the revised only that material which is revised goes there otherwise ah, okay. in okay. in the mfn 001 physiology there were no changes as such Okay. Okay. Got so it. So can. I'll I'll download because I downloaded this yeah. uh, a while back. I'll download the applied physiology yeah. from the older one. Older one. So Great, likewise, likewise, uh, maybe MFN zero zero two theory mm. uh, is no. also the old one. You know. Okay. Okay. Uh, or okay. maybe so you just check. All I'll those check. I'll, I'll yeah. just check yeah. that with the program yeah. guide yeah. and download accordingly yes. from. Thank you so much. From uh, and with, okay. Yes. Uh, even the you. manuals can be downloaded if you have not got it. Uh, take yes. a print out and go for your practicals. Yes. I'm I'm taking yeah. a print out of all of it, so I have oh. the study material printed already. But this Very is good. I had. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? 
Ma'am, I wanted to ask. Ah, yes, Nikita. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, just wanted to ask you. I have completed my PG Dietetics, uh, Applied Nutrition from Mumbai University. Hmm. Uh, but while taking the admission, my I didn't uploaded the certificate. No, uh, if you so, have uh, not. Uh, 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 but, what is, huh. okay. but next, uh, they some discrepancy appeared. So I next time I apply uh, like uploaded the certificate. But also, I have uh, applied for CNCC courses. So, uh, should I? Can I skip the CNCC <laughs> see, course see, now? See, for we, now, we only only recognize PG diploma in dietetics and public nutrition. Have you done your PG diploma in dietetics? Yes, we, uh, dietetics and applied nutrition. It okay. is from Mumbai so, University. All right. So, what you do? You can write a letter to RC Mumbai saying that you have already done this and by, uh, uh, but i also applied for cncc uh, the cncc may be wavered because i have already done pg diploma your regional director will forward the same to registrar srd okay and if you want uh, the rd sir can mark a copy to me and if I go through it and if I feel that you have already done it, I will write that her CNCC may be wavered. Okay. So yeah. uh, they will inform you then. Till sure. such time it is not wavered, you have to complete it. Okay. Okay. I'll do that now. Thank you. I did PG Dietetics also. Uh, I also did PG Dietetics, PG Diploma in Dietetics. But then you told me no. That then, then you also must write what I've told okay. and uh, write a letter saying that uh, and attach your PG Diploma okay. degree award that we have already done it. But uh, inadvertently, you applied for CNCC. It may be wavered. Write to Registrar SRD with a copy marked to me. Because they will also send it to me only to first uh, authenticate whether it is correct. So I will write if I feel you it is in order, I will say okay, and then they will waiver it for you. Yes, anybody Hello. else? Yeah, ma'am. Parveen. Yeah, yeah. yeah Parveen. Actually, ma'am, uh, I want to ask how to communicate with a uh, study center, you know, for. Uh, Your, okay, okay, your regional director. Sir, he will just he will okay. just inform you. He will just inform you. Okay, ma'am. And one more, I have just given the examination for CNCC. Hmm. Uh, uh, after uh, completed this, then I will able to appear for MSc, right? Uh, and see, uh, ha, what I'm I told you was that I'm very happy that you appeared for the exam. You can continue your MSc, but by chance, if you do not clear it, do not panic. You will get a chance again in June to complete it. Okay. Meanwhile, continue with your MSc. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, please. Ma'am. Anybody? Ha. Yes, Zoya. Ma'am, I had a doubt. Ma'am, I had applied for CNCC and for MSc DFSM. But it, hmm. in my ID card, I can only see DFSM course. I can't see CNC mentioned. No. Then, um, uh, uh, are you from nutrition background? Yes, ma'am. What have you done? So, I have done BSc. And then in I what? have done diploma in dietetics and then diploma in dietetics and nutrition. Uh, from where? I have done from VLCC Institute. No, we do not recognize that. So Therefore that is you, the reason. Yeah. It is not so, mentioned so, on my ID so card. You will have to write to your regional director again. Okay. And he will then ask. He will forward the letter that the student may be asked to pay the fees and complete the registration. Only then you can continue. Yes, ma'am. So I have paid the fees, but it is not visible in my ID card. Uh, so did you pay it separately? So it was a total fees, a lot, the MSc DFS and okay, plus then the CNCC. Write, write a letter and give it to your regional director. Okay. Okay. And he will forward this letter to Registrar SRD with a mm -hmm. request 
have you got an enrollment number for cncc ma'am but i have done bsc in nutrition uh, from mumbai university doesn't Nebula matter Nikita. doesn't matter but mm -hmm. you, did you have a, a bsc in nutrition yes ma'am bsc in nutrition mm -hmm. or bsc yes, home science or bsc in yes in home science nutrition uh, uh do you have your certificate Uh, indicating yes, that you have a nutrition papers in it yes ma'am then again you need to write to rc mumbai giving okay, proof giving proof that you have your degree in maybe ask mumbai university to write that yes she has her major in nutrition okay, okay ma'am and then and, you can uh ha -huh. uh ma'am second i had to ask you that is there any way to cancel the admission now and then opt for in another year no next I, uh, year i am not uh, i think uh, okay, uh, i don't have the information um, you need to uh, discuss these matters either with rc mumbai or with registrar because you see it will be a long process as as i see it you know okay ma'am yeah so it's better yes, you continue okay ma'am yeah thank you oh. good evening yeah. ma'am good evening tanya uh, ma'am i am actually not receive any study material yet so hmm. what can i do i have just told you e gyan kosh there is yes. a link on the ignu website which has all the course material original revised like the other student was telling us go to e gyan kosh msc dfsm link download all the soft copies and keep it Yes, yes. On so also practical manuals. Everything is there. What you don't have, email it to me. That, ma'am, I can't see this manual. Can you send me a copy? I will send you a soft copy. But everything mm -hmm. is available online. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Ma'am, how to communicate study center? Ha. Huh. uh i think uh, auji if you can tell them how they communicate with madam madam that all the uh, student support service uh, issues we will take in the at the final okay uh, but the, is there somebody from the program study center here uh, who is here from the program study center no a student coordinator is there they, they where is she My study center is B N M College, Madhya. Ah, but who is there from B M College here? B M College, there is assistant coordinator. Ha, ah, where is the assistant coordinator? I don't see her here. It would have helped her also if she was here to understand, you know. Yes, yes. Maybe yes. we invited. We invited them. Yeah, but but you see, they should have been here. This is not done. I mean, I think ask them to talk to me, Rauji. Yes. Ask her to talk to me on phone. You can give her my mobile number. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Card Any? information like exams, assignments. Ha. Huh. What are you? What you want to know? Solo mission. Solo mission. How do you communicate to the study center? Card information like exams, assignments. No. Oh, see. I See, think normally, normally. Wait, wait, wait a minute, please, dear learners. We are going to take such type of the queries after this end of this meeting because of DNH students also waiting. If we start taking the all the student related queries, it may take the time. Other students also have to listen the madam about their DNH program. Madam, please first complete. Okay. See. Uh, okay. I will just just tell you what you can do is uh, send an email to RC Mumbai. Okay. They will take care. And as sir is saying that at the end they no, will. No, 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 madam. The assistant coordinator is available. Maybe okay. her problem is Dr. Sonisha there. She is going. Sonisha. Okay. She will be there. She will take us. As the phone okay. numbers. For the students, right. no need okay. to worry about that. Okay. Any other question, ma'am? Good evening, ma'am. Yeah. Yes, Ekta. Uh, ma'am, uh, ma'am, I just wanted to know that uh, I like as I heard now that CNCC program, but ma'am, I have completed uh, BNYS, that is Bachelor's in Naturopathy and Yoga, and no, it was had. 
No, uh, naturopathy yoga actually is not an eligibility for this program. Who has given you admission? You please contact uh, RC Mumbai and he will have to initiate a refund process. BNYS is not an eligibility for this program. You see, uh, uh, it is why we, we have to stick to the eligibility because today the new act has also come. And it is very clear who all can uh, uh, be part of this program. Tomorrow, you will not be recognized anywhere. So, uh, Ekta, um, uh, I will request the director, sir, to please ask her to give her details and send it to me. I will get it checked. What is the problem? Ekta, can you email me your details, please? Sure. Yes, and so that I can check what is the problem, why, uh, or how we can help you. Okay. And ma'am, uh, if I want to take uh, in the master's plan, so what shall I do? Like next, I have to do PG diploma to take no, the admission. No, no, no. The minimum requirement is a BSc in home science. Okay. okay? Or BSc in nutrition, or we are opening it up for honors students in microbiology, biochemistry, food science. But these three categories.